My name is Max Solomon. I was one of two animation supervisors on uh, Gravity. I've been at Framestore for 14 years, approximately, and um, worked on Gravity from the beginning of the previous in 2010, early 2010. Um, we delivered the film at the beginning of 2013, so I was on the project for about two and a half, two and a half years. I guess what was different about Gravity is that the previous wasn't purely a visualization for the director and the studio of what the film was going to be like. It was actually because of the methodologies that were developed over the course of the of the pre-production. Uh, the previous actually drove the shoot to a, to a greater extent. Um, they used robots to drive the cameras, and also the actors were on um, robotic arms or. Um, Tilt, we called it a tilt rig, which could swivel them and, and tilt them from side to side. Um, and so that, that motion was all derived from the previous. So the relationship of the actor to the camera in the previous was sort of deconstructed. Um, so that the, and that was because it was impossible to make the actors move through space in the way that they did in the film um, because of the zero gravity. And, and so the only way to achieve that feeling was putting all the motion into the camera uh, and some of it into the tilt rig that I described. Um, the, the previous was very much... Alfonso understood that the previous was going to be his film. If you look at all the way through the film, we previous pretty much the whole film, and the sequences are almost exactly the same. There's timing differences and some small composition differences and obviously allowances for the performance that the actors gave, because you know, emotional delivery was very different and, and obviously not there in the previous, so. But um, essentially, that is the film that Alfonso envisaged in the previous. I think what's particularly unusual is that um, the director will envisage a sequence in a storyboard fashion and then stay consistent with that through the whole length of the project. The, the, the sequences were developed and finessed and improved and new ideas did come in, but the fundamentals of the sequences stayed consistent through from storyboard to previous to, to final shot. It's and that is quite unusual. I think that's a testament to to Alfonso and his, you know, strong vision of how the sequences should be. It's where if you have a strong vision of how something should be and you're not prepared to compromise that vision, then you have to work clever ways and new ways of of achieving that vision. And I think that was what was special about Gravity is that we didn't compromise we didn't take shortcuts. We said, just because this hasn't been done before doesn't mean that we won't try it and we won't do it. Um, and that's why we came up with these new ways of filming. And, they, you know, people have asked me if, if other films would be made in the same way. But I don't think maybe elements could be used of the things that we did in Gravity, but the combination of... of um, of tools and, and things that were done on gravity were specific to that challenge. You know, a lot of it wouldn't be, there'd be no point trying it on a different film because that film wouldn't need what gravity needed. You know, it's only if you were making another gravity would you specifically might want to use those, that approach. I mean, it wasn't really a, a creative challenge, but there was certainly a te massive technical challenge of dealing with the very long shots. Um, I think the longest shot is over 13 minutes, single continuous, take without any cuts and when you have that um, you have an enormous amount of data to handle that needs to be kept in sync particularly because you've got live action elements that are constantly being edited and adjusted and so the timing changes there have to constantly but it's like a linear a linear stack of, of information you take one thing out and everything has to join up and stay in sync so just the management of that was an enormous overhead and was just basically very there was clever tools developed, but also it was just very laborious. It involved people just staying and making sure that everything across departments as well, it's not just in animation, but you've got lighting, you've got the effects guys doing massive simulations and explosions and, you know, enormous amounts of data that needed to stay connected.
So that was a massive overhead and really just involved everybody being on the same page and constantly communicating and working together. I think it's just, and perhaps it's one of the reasons that people have liked the film so much, that it's just an unusual film that's not, it's not a reboot or a franchise. You know, um, it's, it's an original script, which is quite rare these days in a big Hollywood film. Um, I was nervous about the cast. The cast changed a few times. Uh, and I guess, you know, Alfonso doesn't have big hits to his name. So there was, although the studio felt that this was something special, I guess they were a little nervous about putting so much money behind him. And he's since very much proven them wrong, uh, or certainly not proven them wrong, but rewarded them for their uh, faith. But um, I think also it was it was very much a visual film. It re relied on it relied on those key sequences being spectacular. And and when you're just looking at previs or fairly basic blocking action, you know it's very hard to project and imagine what it might be like. See really see the potential um, of the work. So you know there wasn't any amazing dialogue sequences or you know kind of repartee. It was it's very much a an effects-driven piece, and and also about Sandra delivering an amazing performance that you know drew everybody into the film emotionally. You know, so there's a lot of things that, from an early stage, it's are untangible and hard to you know believe in. There's a lot of things that could have gone wrong, and I think that was one of the special things about the film is that so many elements all came together. It's very rare that you get a film where so many separate things all seem to work. Everything seems to fit together. I mean, the sound was amazing, the music was amazing visual effects, the performances were amazing, the look of the film, the direction, everything worked, you know. There's so many films that one or two elements are great, but other elements are not so great. Alphonse has made films at Framestore before. We did Children of Men with him. Um, and we also worked with him on um, the third Harry Potter film where we did the Hippogriff. Um, so in all these films, he always brings something special to the film. Um, I think he's a brilliant visual effects director in that he understands that visual effects shouldn't stand out as visual effects. It should fit into the film as a whole and feel part of the film. Um, so we were very excited purely on that basis for this film. And I think even early on when we did the very first previs, just the whole, it's just an exciting thing that somebody says, this is going you know, we're going to have an open shot of 13 minutes with no cuts and you know that kind of radical thing that you don't see in big visual effects films um, it's just very exciting you know that somebody is pushing something in into a new place um, and also it's something that hadn't been done before you know most of the stuff we do is 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 fantastical creatures or aliens or robots and, and although on face value um, I remember a lot of the animators were resistant to working on gravity because they thought, well, it's just astronauts floating around, waving their arms stupidly. But actually, the more we studied reference and, and thought about it, we realised the complexity of, of motion, the way things behave under the, the different physics of zero gravity and is actually quite challenge, challenging to reproduce. Um, there was a lot of very novel challenges about the film from an animation point of view. Um, and also it was a very, because we were so integrated into the film from so early, early on, we were very involved in the whole filmmaking process. I mean, we animated the camera throughout the film. It was pretty much, all, apart from a few of the live action scenes, the camera was always a CG camera that we animated. And that was a very exciting challenge as well. Um, I said in my talk, it felt like a third character. We spent as much time animating the camera um, as we did the, the astronauts, you know, Alfonso was so exacting about the compositions and every small um, rotation and adjustment of the camera was, you know, very specifically thought through. And so, yeah, I mean, on face value, like I said, it was a lot of unappealing things, but actually it was a very novel, exciting film. One of the basic rules I learned early on is that you can't do what you want. And if you have to do what they want and do what you want. So it, it is harder if you want to give input into the process, you have to work twice as hard because you have to do what they've asked and show them that, that it could work that way, but then also show them the opposite. So you have to do twice the amount of work. I remember an animator uh, that I worked with a few years ago said that um, he found the first few years of working in visual effects film very difficult uh, until he realized that 
he wasn't making his film, he was making somebody else's film. And he had to understand their vision. And once he made that leap of, you know, concept, conceptual approach to it, it was much easier for him. He stopped thinking about how he would do it and, and thinking how they would do it. But that doesn't mean, I think what you're talking about, it doesn't mean he's stepping back from the creative process. But it's about engaging with what the director or the writer was thinking about for the film at that time and seeing how you can make that work better rather than trying to put your own ideas about how it might work. It's been great, yeah. Um, no, it's been very well organised and there's a real enthusiasm from the students. Um, I've spoken to quite a few at our uh, recruitment booth and they're really cool. I've been very impressed with the quality of the work, actually. There's some very talented students here. Yeah, there's a nice buzz about it. It seems like, you know, there's, uh, there's the volume of presenters as well is amazing. I'd, I'd love to stay. I, 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 I'm a bit confused if I was visiting the, the conference, actually. It'd be very hard to choose because you've got so many things all happening at the same time. Like, how do you decide which one to go through to be very frustrating, I think. Just too much to see.